there once again. Uh, Bill Pfeiffer speaking from Mary's Field. Good to be with you. And, uh, press the subscribe and the like button if you indeed like. Uh, I'd like to share a few things today uh, about Advent. I just uh, was looking at one of my uh, pieces of paper here on the desk, and I, I see there are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is a miracle. Boy, they're nice words to start today out, aren't they? There are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is a miracle. I'd like to spend a little time about Advent and talking about Christmas and so on. This incredible time, miraculous time of the year, <laughs> uh, the coming of Jesus, just absolutely, absolutely marvelous. Marvelous. The Advent is... Um, uh, each of the liturgical seasons have a time of preparation before the, the great feast. You know, Christmas has a time of preparation called Advent. Lent, uh, Easter has a, a time of preparation called Lent. And uh, Pentecost, the season of love, has a, a period of preparation after uh, between Easter and, 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 and Pentecost. So the first season, uh, Advent, is the, the, the season of light. Christmas is a season of light, light everywhere, you know, and, and, uh, and marvelous. Uh, Lent is the season of uh, life, the Good Friday, uh, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus. So it's a season of light, the Christmas Epiphany mystery, the season of, uh, of life, Lent, and the Easter wonderful Paschal mystery, and then the season of love, uh, the period of uh, preparation and the uh, celebration of, uh, of uh, Pentecost. Advent is, uh, celebrates in some ways the three comings uh, of, of uh, Jesus in the flesh. The primary focus of Advent is his uh, uh, coming at Christmas time, uh, which is one of the uh, the biggest of the underlying themes of Advent. His second is the coming is his coming in grace. Uh, as a result of his death and resurrection, the Holy Spirit takes up life inside of us and God dwells in us as a result of our baptism. So the first coming is uh, his coming in, in, as a uh, human being at Christmas time. The second is his coming uh, as uh, with grace. And the third is his coming at the end of time. You know, the, the, the death and resurrection, the second coming of Jesus, the new heaven and the new earth. Um, human nature at Christmas time is united to the Word of God, to, to the uh, second person of the Blessed Trinity, in everything that uh, that, that means. Uh, Jesus became uh, fully human, fully a man, and, and uh, not pretending. You know, he wasn't pretending. Sometimes uh, I, I talk with people and they get you get the feeling that he's really Superman, but he's pretending to be Clark Kent, you know, uh, that, that somehow uh, he has these supernatural powers because he's God, uh, but on the other hand, uh, he's not really human. He's just pretending. He's just like Clark, Clark Kent, he's, he, and, and that, that's not true. Jesus was fully human in everything that that means. Uh, he grew in consciousness as a little boy. He, he learned how to uh, make things with, uh, with uh, uh, Joseph. Mary had to teach him how to use a spoon. She had to uh, change his diaper. Uh, uh, they had to teach him to pray. Can you imagine that, teaching the Son of God to pray? But, the, but they did, and, and because he was fully human. And uh, we, we kind of don't believe that, but that was really true. He's the, the Son of God in the womb of Mary. That's Advent. And then the second uh, thing that, that kind of happens is the eternal word appears in human form as the light of the world. Ah, that just, that's been buzzing in my head for the last month or so. Light, you know, light, light is a marvelous thing. Scientists have discovered that what looks like darkness to the human eye is actually filled with tiny particles. They call them neutrinos, slivers of light that pass through the entire universe. Isn't that marvelous? You know, uh, uh, can you imagine? There's no such thing as total darkness anywhere, even though the human eye thinks there is. The opening words of St. John's Gospel uh, come to mind. They're more explosively and more accurate than I think John really understood when he describes Christ and he describes the incarnation and, and, and Christmas. Jesus appears in human form, you know, as the light, the light of the world. Light is not so much 
uh, what you directly see as that which by uh, that by which you see everything else, and that's really true of Jesus as well. The uh, the, the the section in, in John's Gospel, the the, the first uh, couple of lines, just absolutely marvelous. And again, I don't think John really understood uh, fully what uh, uh, what he was write, writing about. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it, it just it talks about whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him, and any did, who do did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. Imagine that you're a child of God. God has no grandchildren. You're his child. And he does for you all of the things that a good parent does for children, the loving, the caring, and the forgiving, all of the gentle, loving things. The word became flesh, and it says, filled with enduring love. And then of his fullness, we have all had a share. Boy, hold on to that. Of his fullness, we have all had a share. Love following upon love. That's where it comes in. There are only two ways to live your life, huh? One, as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. And this is a miracle that is present every moment of your life. That presence, that wild presence of God. So he's, Jesus, a fully human, fully a man. And while this enduring, while the law was given through Moses, this enduring love came through Jesus Christ. Marvelous opening words of uh, St. John's Gospel. One of the, his, uh, the Gospels used in one of the uh, uh, liturgies on, on, on uh, Christmas Day. Uh, but light, what a marvelous thing, you know. Uh, the, the light of men. You know, Jesus uh, says, I am the light of the world. Boy, that's almost bragging and boastfulness, isn't it? You know, just, I'm the light of the world. And another place he says, you are the light. Anyone who uh, is a follower of mine will never walk in darkness. Can you believe it? You know, and, you know, it's, it's like, I think he was fooling with us, you know, uh, uh, with the neutrinos. He said, holy moly, there's no place where there's complete darkness. For, so for 13.7 billion years, when he said, let there be light in the book of Genesis, you know, he was, he was kind of a really cute way saying, I'm going to sneak in what these people are going to think is darkness, and I'm going to be that light as well. Kind of playing, playing with us, you know. So no follower of mine will ever walk in darkness. Isn't that marvelous, huh? He shall possess the light of life. Why are we always creating substitutes, idols for God, you know? Kind of crazy, huh? Money, possessions, power, control. It's just uh, kind of, kind of, kind of crazy, isn't it? So you are the light of the world. You know, a city set on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Men do not light a lamp and then push it under a, put it under a bushel basket. They put it on a lampstand where it gives light to everyone in the room. So you're supposed to go out and show your light to other people. Why? To give praise to your heavenly Father, not to bring uh, glory and honor uh, to yourself. So there's no pride, no pride or no ego in there. Advent's a wonderful time, the time of light. And uh, boy, Jesus is the light of the world. Again, he just, you know, I am the light of the world, John 8, he says. It's almost boastful, but, uh, but marvelous, huh? So uh, remember the neutrinos. There's no darkness, and you're living in this light. You know, we are to be the light of the world so that we can give praise and glory uh, to God. So Advent, a marvelous time of the year. Jesus became fully human. You know, that means he, he grew in consciousness the way everybody else does. He grew and he learned things. He understood things slowly as, as his consciousness was able to, uh, to, to uh, take hold of them and so on. Not fooling. He's not a Clark Kent, you know, a really Superman rather than pretending to be Clark Kent. Uh, he's really, really fully human and fully divine, unmixed human and divine, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, totally, uh, totally both and complete. So uh, it's, it's uh, you know, just absolutely marvelous. Happiness tomorrow now depends on doing the truth today. One of the things during this season is to understand the, the three comings of, uh, of Jesus uh, coming at Christmas time, coming already having come really huh as grace inside of our hearts and the coming at the end of time to create the new heaven and the uh, uh, the new earth so stay awake stay awake uh, that reminds me of a little story uh, there's a fellow sitting at the uh, intersection of uh, 
four big farm fields, and he was there day and all the time. Just every time people went by, you always seemed to see him, and and uh, and and he was very charismatic. Uh, uh, you know, people knew that when they were walking by him, you could feel his presence, that there was something special and unique about this man. And one man, uh, in going by uh, one day, asked this man, what is it that makes you different? And he said simply, I am awake. He was aware of what was happening around him, awareness. You know, I believe truly that the moment that you become totally aware of the present moment is at that moment you feel God in your life. So it's absolutely marvelous. So uh, keep on going and, uh, and, and, and remember that, uh, that Christmas, uh, you know, is, is a transformative time. You are the light of the world. And it means there's no darkness, you know, uh, no darkness. Remember the neutrinos, uh, the slivers of light. Even what looks like dark is not really dark. Good to be with you again. God bless. Uh, keep me in your thoughts and prayers, and you are always in mine.